every pattern on the Modor DR2 actually has three clocks, a master clock and then two subsidiary clocks. The subsidiary clocks live under the alpha and beta buttons. Now normally all instruments are on the master, but you can assign any instrument to any of those three clocks. Now most high-end drum machines allow some sort of clock speed changes but often that's only in increments like you could run certain tracks at half speed or quarter speed or double speed things like that which is extremely handy but all those hits are still going to be on the grid the big difference with the dr2 is you can create some truly strange time signatures and get your hits definitely off the grid so let's see how it's done hold down either the alpha or beta button and you'll see in the little display polyclock alpha 1616 and they're adjusted by these two knobs so what they actually mean and you can see that it actually goes into halves and then you can change this and that goes into halves as well all the way down to a half or up to 16. Now 1616 is just identical to the master clock so that's of no particular consequence but what these numbers mean is play this number of steps in this many steps of the master clock so for example if we go uh, 1116 it means play 11 steps in the time that it takes the master clock to play 16 so you can see straight away you're going to be off grid there but you can get much stranger than that you can say play nine and a half steps in the time it takes the master clock to play 15 and a half steps so strangeness is guaranteed if you want it and then the way you assign things to these subsidiary clocks is hold down an instrument button and press the clock you want. So now we see basic snare polyclock alpha. If you want to take it off that, hold it down, press it again. And now it says main clock. So let's hear this in action. There is the most basic bass drum you could ever want. Here we'll have the most basic snare. Okay, let's define the alpha clock. Well, we've got 916, let's use that. So now let's assign the bass drum to that clock. So you hold down the instrument the clock and you can see that it's truncated to fit that because what it's saying is fit those nine steps in the time that it takes to play 16 on the master clock now if we change the snare to alpha as well Let's define the beta clock. So let's make that something a bit different. Let's go 8, 12, and put the snare on the beta clock. So it's a bit slow. Let's speed that up. So let's play. Let's have 12 in the space that it takes the main clock to play 4. Let's put bass drum back to the main clock. So that's all very amusing and you could torture your ears for hours trying all sorts of strange things but let's go to an actual pattern and assign some clock values now 
is a pretty bog standard sort of a thing. This is active here, so let's play with this clock. Let's be conservative to start with and say 12, 16. So let's assign the hi-hats to that. Okay, let's assign everything except the bass drum to that. Or assign the bass drum to it and take the other ones off. So here we have a much more complex pattern. Let's assign a clock value here. So we'll have, let's start with something pretty basic. So we'll have 12 steps in the time that it would take to do 16 on the master. We'll set it play and then we'll assign a couple of things to that clock. Bass drum on it. This one really messes it up when it's on, so let's assign that to beta. Let's put beta on to something. More sedate. Uh, that's sort of interesting. And if we turn on a delay. a Zen delay that I've got slightly off screen. Let's keep playing with those clocks. See how we can tweak it a bit. That's on 416. Let's try something a bit different with this one. Speed. This 
one back on the main clock. Ah, oh, yes, you see it's all falling to bits. But that's the joy of it, isn't it? Turn the delay on it, sort of smears it all back out again. And certainly, if you think about the original, let's reload the original. So it's pattern nine. You've created something very different just by manipulating the clocks. Now the DR2 also has a Euclidean pattern generator. It seems a little bit tame and usual after the polyrhythmic excitement, but let's have a quick look. To get into it, you hold shift and reverse. Euclidean rhythm. The three knobs you'll need is the select value and the amount. Select is the number of steps, value is the number of hits, and amount is rotation. It says here A, so we know that we're on the Euclidean pattern for instrument A. So let's do that number of steps. We'll have so we'll have 16 steps. We'll have number of hits in there, we'll have, uh, well, let's be incredibly obvious, and we'll have no rotation, and then it says yes, no here, so we'll go yes. So there we are, let's put them in. Let's go to our snare, shift reverse, so number of steps. Twelve number of hits five rotation two yes Again, so number of steps, 12, number of hits, 9, no rotation. Let's try something a bit different with this one. So the number of steps. Let's try something unusual. Eighteen. Number of hits. Ten. And the rotation. Three. another option in this machine which is packed full of options I've done a few videos on it now and there's all sorts of things i still haven't covered until next time see ya